Thanks to you, Chair, for being here. Uh, we always appreciate your visits. Now, the, I note in, in your uh, comments today, you're talking about the labor force participation rate. And in the past, I think you and I have had an opportunity to discuss that. And it was not something that seemed to be a concentration on the part of the feds before now, and it is now. What changed uh, that, that it's become a bigger concentration for you all? Um, so it's important for us to try to determine how much slack there is in labor markets, how much potential there is. Sure, I understand that, but that is. was important before, but, but there didn't seem to be any, any comments from you. In fact, in 2016, it, it was just a number that, that didn't come readily to your mind when, when you're in front of the committee here. I just wondered what has changed since January that, uh, that you would now be concentrating on that. But so, I mean, I think I was discussing this last year because it is a source of uncertainty after a very long and deep right. recession. Um, we want to understand what potential okay. there is for people to come back. And I, as I mentioned in my testimony, labor force participation rate has been... No, I, I appreciate that. If I could grab up my time now. I'm, I'm going through the monetary policy report here, and I'm going through your comments. And I almost don't see anything about that number on the screen behind you. It's just constantly rolling there, and it's a debt. And uh, maybe it doesn't mean anything, and so, sort of maybe it does. Do you all ever talk about that in your, in your committee? Do, do, you, do, you, do you ever contemplate that in your position? Well, I've discussed this previously with this committee. I understand, but we didn't get others. it into the report today as one of the driving factors and something we ought to be thinking about. So how did it affect you all when Illinois was downgraded, their bond rating was downgraded the first of the year, and they are paying what one analyst said is the highest differential in our history. Now that's the reason they're having to pay more and the bonds being downgraded is because they can't afford to pay the bills, basically. And if you hold their bonds, you may not get paid. If you went back to Detroit when it filed bankruptcy, bondholders only got 74% on the dollar. And so, I mean, it, and it all feeds back toward this number here and the fact that it doesn't even make the print, not even the fine print that I could find, maybe I missed it, but I did see the one sentence about Illinois being downgraded and there was a brief discussion of Puerto Rico. But the idea that we, we as a country are not discussing our ability to pay our bills is something that I think there is a downside effect to the problem, but the fact that, that your report doesn't bring it up is, is a little concerning to me. And the way that really played out was a couple of weeks ago when Chicago schools tried to issue a bond rating and they didn't get any bidders at all, none. So they ended up driving the rate, the, uh, the rate up to seven, seven and a half, seven three quarters or something. But it seems like that the people in charge of the financial stability of the country, the value of our dollar, the value of our promises to pay, it just seems like it would have a little bit more important in, in the document here. I, I would expect, frankly, maybe a whole chapter because there are estimates that we can't pay our bills in this country. And so we continue to operate as if, uh, as if it's not gonna matter if our ratings are downgraded if our interest rate goes up, we're already running deficits, which means we have to print the money every year in which to operate. And it seems like that, that the people in charge of the system would be talking about it and, and postulating and telling us, hey, this is kind of serious. Why don't we all work together and start figuring out what we can do to live within our means, to just make sure that we're not paying triple and quadruple what other people are paying for debt. I don't know, I'd love to hear your comments. Well, let me state in the strongest possible terms. I agree that um, what you're showing here represents a trend that given um, current um, spending and taxation decisions is going to lead to an unsustainable debt situation with rising interest rates and um, declining investment in the United States that will further harm uh, productivity growth and living standards. I believe a uh, key 
um, thing that con Congress should be taking into account in designing fiscal policy is the need to achieve sustainability of this uh, debt path over time. This is something I'm not just saying today, but have been emphasizing uh, for some time in my testimony. Thank you very much. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.